Well, welcome back. Welcome anew. I'm Joseph McClendon III, and you have landed on the Further Faster podcast, where our outcome is always to assist you in doing exactly what the name implies, and that is to go further faster in becoming even more wealthy than you already are. And of course, around here, wealthy means to be healthy, happy, and financially abundant. And I am off the chain excited to introduce you to my guest today, our guest today. Her name is Dr. Kamika Smith. And not only is she just an amazing, amazing woman, as you're going to learn in the things that she's created for herself and the successes that she's created for herself, but the greatest part about it is that she has assisted and continues to assist thousands, hundreds of thousands of people to do the same. So grab a pad and paper, and if you're driving, fix that brain on learning something new, and we'll be right back with Dr. Kamika Smith. Well, welcome back. Welcome to the Further Faster podcast. And like I said in the intro, I'm really excited to introduce you to my friend. And she is, uh, before I share with you a little bit about it, I want to share with you that one of my great privileges that I get to do is to meet people uh, that help people and uh, bringing people to this platform, if you will, with the outcome of helping you go further faster and share with you some of the wisdom and the guidance of some of my mentors, of which this amazing woman is as well. Her name is Dr. Kamika Smith. She's a speaker, author, investor. She holds a doctorate in philosophy, and she's an award-winning entrepreneur and the founder of The Boss Network whose outcome is always towards this simple goal, to promote and encourage small business and the small business spirit of professional development of women. Under Kamika's leadership, the Boss Network has become one of the fastest growing women's communities in the world. Inc. Magazine names her as one of the top 50 websites for entrepreneurs. Forbes calls her one of the top best career sites for women. And Kamika is listed by Ebony Magazine as a 40 under 40 entrepreneur. She's named one of the top 40 Chicago game changers by Ariel Investment. And listen, if you're looking at me right now, I got three pages of stuff on this amazing woman. And if I went through it all, it would take up all of this podcast. So instead of doing that, I want to introduce you to Dr. Kamika Smith. Kamika, thank you so much for being on the show. Oh, thank you so much for having me, Dr. Joseph McClendon. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we, got the, we got the doctors in the house here. Well, listen, yes, sir. <laughs> I want to share you. Yeah, <laughs> I want to share with you with the world. And I want to start off with a little bit. Just share with us a little bit about your journey, what brought you to where you are, because and we'll share with you, you know, how you and I know each other here in just a little bit. But share with us a little bit about your journey, what brought you to to the amazing person that you are and the people that you help now. Wow. So that's a that's a pretty loaded question. So I got to try to condense that. <laughs> um, you know, Joseph, I would say that um, my journey began, you know, here in Chicago. Um, you know, many people know we're probably like the, what, the third largest uh, city in the country in the U.S. And, yes. you know, um, for many African-Americans, um, you know, most of us grew up in like the inner cities of Chicago. And so, you know, my mom, mm -hmm. uh, native of Mississippi, you know, the Delta came here when she was about 14 yeah. years old and she um, had me at a very young age. Um, she, you know, uh, lost her mom when she was about two years old. So that part of the story I think is really mm -hmm. interesting because, you know, um, she didn't have that, you know, true guidance of a parent that a lot mm -hmm. of us are lucky to have. Um, but, you know, she did what I think a lot of amazing people do is she just took everything that she didn't have and created those opportunities for her children. And so um, she really just instilled education into myself, my sister, my brother. Yeah. She really believed in exposure. She knew that even though we stayed in certain communities, that exposing us to the arts and to different opportunities was going to expand our mindset and the things that we would want in life. And so, um, yeah, so that's how it all started. And she was a giver, you know, um, I lost my mom this year. So, it, you know, I'm, I'm talking about her in third person because it oh, just yeah. feels a little uh, emotional. But it yeah, just made, makes me realize how much of, yeah, how much of an impact she had on my life and who she was as a woman. She was a leader um, in our community. Um, she was also a pastor. 
And so she, you know, raised us in the church. She was a servant leader. And so she was all about, you know, giving back and helping people and also encouraging people to dream big. That was just her thing, you know, so she instilled it in us. And so it became a big part of who I am. And so when I decided to, you know, go to college and figure out a career, I knew I wanted to do something that was going to help others. So I got my master's in education and began my career um, as an administrator for Chicago Public Schools, one of the largest school districts in the country. And that was important for me, Joseph, because I, I saw a lot of the kids that I grew up with, not with the same opportunities, you know, because they didn't have a mother yes. like mine. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I really want to go back to that community and show those kids that you can, it's not about, about where you start, it's about where you end up, right? And so instilling in them all the tools that they needed and exposure, because I believe exposure is huge, to show them that there was so much more um, outside of their, you know, block or community. Yeah. That is spectacular. You know, it warms my heart to hear you talk about your mom that way. I lost my mom a few years ago. And it's almost like you're talking about my mom as well. Same thing. She, yeah. she, uh, <clears throat> you know, she was a giver. My mom, way before the term basket brigade uh, became popular, my mom was that person that was out there doing things and bring it back to the community and forcing us to do it as well. We had to go door to door and collect money for different charities. And so uh -huh. obviously, and a lot of people, as you said before, don't have this type of influence. And that's what you've become uh, for so many other mm -hmm. people, especially women in general. Share with us a little bit about the Boss Network, what it is and what made you, what brought you to that place again? Because, because you know, on this show, we try to get people or share with people kind of the, the journey that comes along with that as well. So people can realize, well, I can do that as well. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because, you know, I did like most of us good Americans do. Right. I went to college. I got the degree and I was looking for that American dream. And so I started my career, was loving, you know, um, educating and teaching and training um, with young people in Chicago. And, you know, around 2008, 2009, when the recession hit, you know, I was laid off. So that was like a real big, you know, wake up call for me about yeah. adulthood, right? In real life, it doesn't always yeah. work out as you plan. <laughs> um, yeah, adulthood. I love yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, like right? your face. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. Someone said something so funny, Joseph. They were like, um, I live in the hood and I don't want to be here anymore. And it's called adulthood. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, <laughs> listen so you know i had learned really quickly what adulthood was all about you know it's just falling and then picking yourself back up and figuring out how to you know reinvent yourself and so um when i got laid off i had always you know been really great at connecting and networking with people every you know career that i had within my short career span before i became an entrepreneur had been because of um, mentors and word of mouth you know i there was a position that became available and you know i, I wanted the position so i talked to someone and they're like hey you should you know think about kamika and didn't even have to interview it just was like okay you want the job it's yours because i knew how to build those really solid relationships and so i really tell people that a lot of times what you learn as an adult growing up as a young person what you do in your career it really kind of is what's steering you into that ultimate passion or or pursuit of happiness which you know for me it was mm. being an entrepreneur mm -hmm. Um, I didn't have entrepreneurs in my family, so I don't think that was my first choice as a career because I just didn't know much about it. I knew more hustlers, <laughs> you know, people who were trying yeah, to figure yeah. it out by high side hustles and, you know, doing what you got to do to make ends meet. And so I took that tenacity and that drive as a as a hustler. And I had, you know, started a small business while I was in my career, which is an event marketing company. So when I get laid off, I just told myself, you know what, Joseph, I'm going to take a year off, right? Because uh, I deserve it. I've been working since I was probably about 14 years old. And I'm going to just focus on this business. I honestly don't think that I saw it as like a full-time career. I just knew I wanted to have a business and I wanted to grow it until I decided to go back to work. And um, as I was, you know, building my event company and talking to different entrepreneurs about how do you grow a business? Because as a side hustle, it's different because you're not really depending on that income. Mm -hmm. But as a full-time entrepreneur, I really needed to know how do I make this work? And having those different conversations and having access to these amazing, successful entrepreneurs, it kind of sparked something in me to say, you know what? I need to give other people in my community access to this, right? I've been blessed to have this access. I need to share this information with other women um, and so I launched the boss series, which is an acronym because I'm an educator and every good educator has an acronym. Uh, it stands for 
<laughs> it stands for bringing out successful sisters because I really wanted people to know exactly what this event was about, right? I wanted to bring out Black women who were successful, who wanted to grow and develop. And at the time I was probably, you know, 28, 29 years old. So I really wanted people to take me seriously and understand that I was trying to figure out how do I create success for myself and then also create a legacy so that I can change the trajectory of what I saw in my community. And I really believe that entrepreneurship is the is the pipeline to that economic you know, freedom. It really is nowadays economic, economic and otherwise. We, we say that, uh, as I said at the top of the show, it's about being wealthy, healthy, happy and financially abundant. And you really have you kind of, uh, you know, in, in my opinion, you're not really you're selling yourself a little bit short. So just everybody listening, this woman has well over a quarter of a million people that follow her and and are guided by her. And your nature, which you're exposing to us right now, is not just to do it for yourself, but to, to reach back and and to help other people do that as well. And so you've been successful yeah. in success in helping other people become successful as well. So our hat is off to you mm-hmm. for that as well. And so I always like mm-hmm. to ask, and, and by the way, I sh- we should share with people how we know each other because I've only known you for a couple yeah. of months now. Uh, we have a mutual right. friend, um, Beverly Johnson. Share with us a little bit about uh, Beverly and how you met her. I know you call her your aunt and your, yeah. <laughs> That's Beverly. That's right. Yeah. You know, the power of networking, the power of standing in your purpose. I'm a huge believer in manifestation and purpose driven life. And mm-hmm. that's something that I Uh-oh. learned Come at a on. very young age. Yeah. Yeah. I was introduced to yeah. um, a little movie called The Secret when I was like 24 years old and it changed my life. It changed my thinking. It changed my mindset. And it really showed me. And then also I was raised in the church. So my faith you know, really kind of, you know, stood out for me as well, just knowing that I could just really sure, accomplish anything sure. that I want. I believe in myself and if I believe in the higher power that, you know, guides me. And so for me, you know, launching the Boss Network, it was really, like you said, out of a place of wanting to be successful myself, but then also wanting to see those around me be successful. And so that was a journey within itself, you know, but Beverly and I, we were introduced through a colleague that I met in New York while I was on tour with my um, conferences. And they said, you know, we have, you know, Beverly Johnson, she wants to, you know, work with you and promote, you know, some of her brand products um, to your network. And I'm like, the Beverly Johnson, supermodel icon, trailblazer, <laughs> Beverly Johnson. Are you serious? <laughs> and so this is just like year, you know, year five of my business. So as you know, when it's starting a business, I'm year 15 now, close to year 15, you know, year five, you're kind of just getting your bearings. You're kind of just figuring yeah. it all out and mm-hmm. it, kind of having some momentum, but it's still a lot of work that needs to be done. And so to be able to have access to an influencer and a, um, a leader like Beverly Johnson, I was just like, bring it on. And so we connected and it was immediate love for each other. She believed in what I was doing. And of course, she's all about, you know, uh, trailblazing and creating space for, um, for, for, for minorities and, you know, those that, you know, need the access. And so we started off on a business relationship and it, you know, kind of morphed itself into a more personal relationship just because of the respect that we had for each other as leaders. And so I've learned so much from her And she's opened so many doors for me. And that's the thing that I think is so important Mm -hmm. when we talk about supporting, you know, people, um, you know, you, you need sponsorship. You need people who can speak to your character and that takes time and it doesn't happen overnight. Now, of course, someone introduced us. So they were able to vouch for me and my, my, you know, my validity and the work that I have put in, but she got to know me for herself. And so she was able through that relationship that we've created, introduced me to her partners at JP Morgan Chase you know, and at other, yes. you know, Fortune 100 brands that I've been able to work with. And that's all because of the power of relationship. Absolutely. Well, listen, um, I want to dig deeper in a couple things. And one of them is uh, your, your uh, ideas on what well, here, here's what I'm trying not to go deep into before our break. We're going to take a break here in just a moment. And that is, I want to talk more about your belief about manifesting and creating stuff more, as well as mm-hmm. I want to talk, well, let's, let's start on this right now. Um, how much of the giving spirit and the the willingness to do for others do you think mm-hmm. uh, is important in 
in anybody out in everybody's success because a lot of people are out there just yeah. like I want to make the money I want to bank the bank and I want to do this and everything and they're not really thinking about other people but it's been my experience that people like yourself that have it's, you know at, at the very least a foundation of giving back and obviously what you've been mm-hmm. doing has proven that beyond a shadow of a doubt have that foundation I found mm-hmm. that people that do that seem to go further faster share with us a little bit about your opinion on that absolutely um, Dr. McClendon let me tell you I truly do believe that <laughs> I love saying that, right? I truly do believe that, you know, um, what we put out into the world, we get back. That's just something that I was inherently taught as a there child. You, you know, I was taught about karma. I was taught about, you know, giving, you know, and so for me, it's always been serve your way to success. Um, and a lot of people, you know, oh, might not beautiful. really think that that's a good model, but for me, it has opened so many doors because when you serve, you allow people to see you from a very authentic and a very transparent place and from a place of not really wanting anything in return. And so because of that, you know, it actually rewards you. The universe rewards you um, for your mm-hmm. giving. And so I truly believe that, you know, everything that I've done, it has always been in pursuit of helping someone else. And because of that, the universe, God, you know, the higher power, whatever it is that you believe it is rewarding me for the good that I am doing in, in the world. Now, mind you, it is not this, you know, karmic, you know, voodoo, magical thing. It's still strategy behind it because I'm a businesswoman. I understand that it has to be strategy behind it because there was a point where I was just giving and giving, giving, giving to the point of exhaustion. Yeah. And I realized mm-hmm. that I had to create more strategy behind my business so that I could give from a place of, um, um, uh, overflow and not a place of depletion, if that makes sense. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that is one of your one of your many superpowers is the strategy Mm -hmm. behind it, because I know that's what people come to you for. People say because a lot of people can talk about, listen, you can be an entrepreneur. You can do this. A lot of people can motivate people and get people excited. And underneath what you bring to the table is strategy for people as well. And I know that that's what you did as an educator for a while, was you brought strategy to people there as well. And, um, you know, the way I looked at it as I, I look at it as what you just said there is so true. I look around and one of the privileges that I have, and I know you do as well, Dr. Kamika Smith, uh, <laughs> is that we have the privilege of being in the proximity of what most people would, would consider you know, mega successful people and people yeah. that are are making a difference in this world, uh, of which obviously yourself and people like Beverly. And underneath, in my opinion, all of them is that giving spirit is that that uh, uh that they that, that they're driven and pulled into giving to other people like you said sometimes to a fault i know it was to me i had to get a I, you know i didn't have the strategies that you speak of here but i had to get a check on myself i had to check myself because there was a time where i was that and i still am but now it's with strategy i'd give you the shirt off my yeah. back and even at the detriment of myself sometimes oh i could tell you oh, stories yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, listen, let's take a break. I, here. Know, let's take a break here. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just saying, I find that many of us, you know, in this position that we're in, we do have that form of giving. Right. Um, and so, you know, creating space to where you can still give from a place of abundance, but not, you know, have to, you know, suffer in that giving, um, I think is important. And that's what I had to figure out. Like, OK, nobody called me to be a martyr, you know, like that's not, you don't get rewards yeah, for giving nice. and, and you're <laughs> struggling. That's not, that's not how it works. So, yeah. That, that is beautiful. Well, listen, we're going to take a, a short break and everybody please hang tight. I hope you got your pads and papers because we're going to dig into something that is one of my favorite things. And that is this whole concept, or shall I say this whole fact of manifesting and creating and bringing into your life what you want. And um, we're also going to talk about a little bit, some of the things that that uh, Kamika and myself and Beverly are going to be doing together as well. So hang tight. We'll be right back. Hey, you know, I get asked a lot of questions all the time. Whether it's something, you know, on online, with social media or face to face. And the question I've been asked a lot lately is, Joseph, when are you going to do something live again? Because I haven't done anything live in, in some time. 
And uh, so we, my team and I sat down and thought about it. So we put together an event. I'm happy to announce to you that on October the 29th, through the 30th, 2022, in Las Vegas, Nevada, we're doing a live event called the Further Faster Conference. And this conference is going to be centered around your finances, how to make more money said differently. Now, obviously, we talk about wealthy being healthy, happy, and financially abundant, but this one's gonna be around that because that is a subject that people should be talking about and doing something about right now. I'm gonna bring some amazing guests, some of my mentors that are gonna gonna give you some of their wisdom as well, as well as I'm gonna teach you my signature methodology of putting a million dollars in your pocket in 10 years or less. It'll blow you away. It is absolutely doable for everybody. So put that in your calendar and more specifically, go to neuroencoding.com forward slash FFC. It'll be in the description here. You'll be able to see it, go there, get your questions answered. It's gonna be a small, intimate event so it's first come, first serve. It will sell out. And I look forward to seeing you in there. And remember, life is exactly what you dare to make it. Fortune favors the bold. Boldly step up, and I'll see you in Las Vegas. You're enjoying this episode on Angel Phoenix Productions Podcast Network. To explore our complete lineup of quality programs and media production services, head on over to angelphoenix.com or like our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash angel phoenix productions. Well, welcome back to the Further Faster podcast. If you've been listening to us, we have Dr. Kamika Smith with us right now. And we're about to jump into something that, you know, on the break here a second, we were talking about this. One of my favorite subjects is something that I live by, teach, preach, (laughs) and uh, to have a kindred spirit that has the same belief about that. Kamika, uh, before the break, was talking about that that as well. Her belief in manifesting and creating uh, just and, and bring into your lives the things that we want. So, Kamika, you mentioned that you yeah. saw the movie The Secret. Now, I know a lot of people saw the movie. Listen, that was one of the most popular uh, movies back in the day. And it was one of the first movies that came out mm-hmm. that that had the gall to really bring this public. And a lot of my friends, several of my right. friends are on that movie. Uh, and the movie uh, you know, talks about the secret being that we have the ability to bring into our lives, this is my, these are my words, the situations, circumstances, and even material things that we want. So millions of people saw that movie, and only a mm-hmm. few people did what the movie said. Only a few people did the, yeah. the, the process, and you're one of those people, and did it, and I know you bring that to other people's lives. What is the, first off, I want, to sh- I want you to share with us a couple of things, but first thing I want you to, I want to know is, what do you think is the difference between you and the millions of other people out there that heard it, maybe even got excited about it, but didn't do anything about it? Yeah, so it reminds me of a Bible scripture that says, faith without works is dead. And oh, that's it right there. Come on. You know, I think that a lot of people, you know, we come into situations where we get excited about, you know, um, an idea or something that can help us grow. But then when it does not immediately come into play how we see it happening, then we get discouraged and we give up. Well, for me, manifestation is about setting that intention, um, kind of making it a part of my, 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 my being to where like I feel myself actually in that space. So whether it's, you know, me wanting to buy a house, right? I actually can envision myself in the home. I actually can see the rooms and the furniture. I'm actually, you know, placing myself in that space. But then I'm also doing the work behind it to make sure that I can manifest that, right? Mm. I'm starting to save. I'm working on my credit. I'm looking for a realtor. You know, I'm looking at areas that I want to live in. And so um, creating that that space for myself, but then also putting the work behind it to make sure that I can help it manifest. Because all the universe wants you to do is to lay out the platform, right? So you can't, you know, pray about something or manifest something and then not put in any work so that you can, you know, it's like saying, I want to, you know, have people come over for dinner, but then you lock the door, right? They can't get in. So you have to open the door. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you got to open the door that to make space beautiful. for it to come into your life. And so everything that I do, it is literally set with intention. Um, I, I'm a huge believer in like journaling and vision. Now there was a play, a time in my life where I did a lot of vision boards and I don't do the vision boards mm-hmm. as much as I used to. I actually just kind of like do vision journals 
And so I create, you know, like notes on every project that I want to work on. And I kind of ideate what that's going to look like. Who do I want involved? Who are the speakers? Who are the players? Who are the sponsors? Who are the investors? And then I started to put in the work, but I'm already manifesting it because I have it on paper, write the vision, make it plain, right? So I have it on paper. Now I'm starting to put in the work behind it to manifest those things. And trust me, when I tell you, because I have written it out and I have a plan, everything that I have on that plan, I'm starting to check those things off on my list. And it is very few things that I have on that list that I have not been able to accomplish. Um, and for me, a lot of times I, what I see with my clients or with people that I work with, um, women that I work with, you know, they can create the same thing for themselves. And when something does not go the way they want it to go, they give up. Well, for me, it's like, OK, right. it's time to take a detour. Right. That just might not be meant for me. I don't take it personal. I got thick skin. You know, you can't be an entrepreneur. You can't be <laughs> in this business and be soft. You know what I'm saying? So I got real thick skin. So if someone tells me no, if someone doesn't want to invest, if somebody doesn't want to be a speaker, I'm like, okay, that's just not meant for me. What's the next option? And I'm always thinking big, right? Because I feel like the bigger you go, you know, you fall a little bit harder, but it can only go bigger from down, right? So if I start low, can't really go high. So I start high. And from there, I'm figuring out, okay, you know, if I want to sponsor, I want this amount. So if they don't give me this, maybe I'll get this, right? If I want a speaker, I'm going to go for this speaker. So if they're not available, maybe I can get this person. But I'm always looking at a plan A, B, and C and not like being defeated when plan A does not work. Spectacular. There is so much to unpack there. And you and I can go for days on this and will, by the way, just so you know, because like I said, this yeah. is this is my baby. You know, I have something. So, so a couple of things, you know, my father used to always tell me he used to go always shoot for the stars, because even if you miss them, yes. you're going to land in the trees and the trees are up higher than yes. the ground. And, you know, and, uh, yeah, yeah. You say way more than I did. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's my daddy, you know, it taught me that. And all the things that you're saying with regard to, you know, your vision boards and, and being specific about it and all those things, they're also all rooted in, in because my, my uh, question, which you answered so elegantly, uh, is the difference between you and the millions of people. Mm -hmm. And if I could surmise it, and that is the difference in you is you have a work ethic. That says, you know, and all the, 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 the sayings that you said right there that that, uh, you know, faith without works is is nothing at all. However you put that. Uh, a lot of people have read that. A lot of people know that we all know that I always say to people, listen, you know, knowing something isn't going to get it done. We all if people that want to lose weight. They know how to lose weight. It's just exactly. you do it, what you do is going to produce the result. And so that work ethic uh, that you have in doing that and then the process behind it of which you revealed a little bit of it and unfortunately we don't have all the time to go into <laughs> the process of writing it down you know i say what you write is what you invite you know and what you say mm -hmm. is how you play yeah. and things like that you know help people recognize that wait a minute it's 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 the do something and so yeah. uh, I, a lot of people don't know this and i'm i'm sure you do that the secret came from as a matter of fact, it was the very first book that I read, Kamika, and I suggest everybody get out there and read this book. It's called Think and yes. Grow Rich. And Think and Grow Rich, literally, and matter of fact, she will tell you, I, I, forgive me, I forget the uh, author of The Secret, but she will tell you that that's where it came from. Because if you read the book, within the first couple chapters, and I think it's in the first chapter, it says, I have a secret. And the way that mm. the book is set up is he doesn't tell you straight up. you got to figure it out. And his secret the, and his family. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. His formula mm -hmm. is he calls it definiteness of purpose, meaning knowing what you want mixed with belief, mixed with emotion makes things happen. Yeah. And of course, we've Absolutely. distilled that and make and that's what you do. That is the process that you do. And I kind of take it a step further, which I am dying to have a deeper conversation with you about It's something that I call magnetism. As a matter of fact, the laws of attraction mm -hmm. of which, yes, by the way, if you ask the millions of people. If you ask millions of people that have seen that movie and understand it, what is what is the laws of attraction and what are they? Most of them guess at it. And I'm going to say yeah. this. And then, oh, my goodness, we got so much to talk about. <laughs> I'm going to say this. No. The laws of attraction. Part two. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And, you know, I'd be honored if you'd come back and let's maybe we'll dedicate a, a conversation to this, the whole the whole session. But the laws of attraction are just one of the 21 mm -hmm. immutable laws of magnetism because attraction mm -hmm. implies that you're attracting that towards you 
But what you just said, yes. Kamika, about inviting somebody to dinner and closing the door, that's what most people do. And that is we mm -hmm. sabotage ourselves. We don't think we can do it. You know, my saying yes. procrastination, hesitation, fear of failure, fear of success, self-doubt, self-loathing, all of those things, that's yeah. shutting the door. And that's so right. magnetism is just that. You not only magnetize what you want to come towards you, but you magnetize yourself. And there's science behind it as well. And so, yeah. Yeah. a matter of fact, I am going to publicly right now ask and request that you come back and let's do an episode on this. I would love to you because doubt? manifestation, <laughs> law of attraction, you know, there's so much that I've learned over the years using those tools. And one of the biggest lessons I learned from a child was don't make the mistakes, learn from other people's mistakes, you know, to be honest. Ah, yes. And so I yeah. always look for wisdom and from and guidance from others. And a lot of my mentors will tell you they love working with me because they tell me something and I'm going to put it into action. Like I'm not here like do I want to learn just happen. so I can do my own thing. No, you have studied, you have learned, you have failed. So let me learn from your mistakes. And that's really, you know, how I operate. So I'm excited about, you know, having a deeper conversation because those are the principles that I live by. And I do truly believe that my success comes from that. Yeah, I call it our secret weapon. And so uh, on that note, as we segue out of here, uh, a couple of things, because uh, I'm underneath all of that, you have a, a, a way of thinking. And your way yeah. of thinking allows you, promotes you, uh, motivates you, pulls you into taking that action and those activities that make things happen. I call that your psychology. And you, myself, and Beverly Johnson, and, and I try to keep these things evergreen. So if you're listening to this and it's 2025, you missed it. <laughs> but here we're having an event. <laughs> well, they can hear the, the recording though, right? <laughs> That's right. It, it will live in infamy. It'll live on. And so we're going to be doing an event. It's called The Bold Fortune. And if you're listening to this before October uh, the 15th, uh, 2022, you can go to My Bold Fortune and uh, check it out. We're doing an, a, an event where it's going to be the three of us, and we're going to dig deep into the psychology of success. Said differently, what makes this amazing woman that you've been listening to for the last little while amazing is that she thinks differently than the average person. She'll be the first to tell you that, you know, that she's a human being. She has ups and downs, faults and things like that as well. And her ability to think the way that she does, her psychology is what brings success. So if you're so inclined, and again, if this is after that date, then you can check us out later. If you're so inclined, please check us out and do that. So we got to roll up out of here. Uh, and so I always ask this, if you had just, just you know, 30 seconds to, to impart your most important pearls of wisdom on the listener who doesn't know you, but would like to learn more of you. Two things. How do they find you? And what would be your wisdom that you would tell them? Yes. Well, of course, we are a digital brand. So we are all over social media at the Boss Network. And so definitely please follow me there. Find me there. Engage with me there. And one of the um, I'm looking right here. Um, one of my uh, mentors, my head is a gentleman by the name of George Frazier. And it's a quote that he says, he says, yes. in between the promise and the payoff is a process. And so I live Ooh. with that because I know that whatever that it is that I'm trying to do, there is a process. I know what the promise is. I know what the end goal is. I have that big vision. I'm the visionary, right? I know, um, you know, what, what, where I'm going to start, but that process is the piece that you have to get through. So in between the promise and the payoff is the process. Get it. Get it, get Such it. Yeah, after, get it, get it, get it. Well, listen, this has been amazing. I am buzzing over here and I just want to thank you. Thank you so much for being our guest here. And I know everybody got a lot out of it. And please follow this woman. Please indulge yourself in what she says. And one thing I did want to point out is she said she has mentors. You mentioned it a couple times. And that's, you know, obviously oh, our, our efforts on, on in this podcast. And what we do is to encourage people to find mentors. You said it. You said it. instead of going through the, whole, the school of hard knocks, you know, find others that have gone there before and have done it and learn from them as well. Dr. Smith, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And for everybody else, remember this, that life is exactly what you dare to make it. And fortune, whatever you consider fortune, it favors the bold. You just heard it from this amazing woman, Dr. Kamika Smith, to be bold about it. It doesn't mean be arrogant and and. Uh, you know, be anything other than the greatest person that you can be, the best version of what you can be, but be bold in doing it. So I thank you so much. This has been Further Faster Podcast. I'm Joseph McClendon, and I will see you at the top.
This podcast was a production of Angel Phoenix Productions. Explore more episodes of this show or other great shows on the Angel Phoenix Podcast Network by visiting angelphoenix.com. The views expressed in this show do not necessarily represent those of Angel Phoenix Productions or its advertisers and may contain language that's unsuitable for younger listeners.